You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. If you trade options, you want to be smart about every decision. So why not choose the smartest platform for your trades? At public.com, you can view upcoming earnings dates directly in the options chain. You can queue and execute multiple orders simultaneously. Easily view contract performance over time. And if you have a question about any stock, you can ask Alpha, their AI for investors. But want to know the smartest part of trading options on public? earning rebates on every single contract traded. No other platform provides options trading rebates, and they reduce your trading costs to less than $0 per trade. So, make the smart move and switch to public.com, the only options trading platform where you can earn rebates on every single contract traded. Paid for by Public Investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Education Wednesday time. To roll out the red carpet for a little bit of options education. Yes, it is time once again for the show, The Cool Kids Call OBC. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com. Hope you're having a good trading week out there. If you're hanging out in our pro, TheOptionsInsider.com slash pro, then you're checking out episode two already in your ear holes of our doubleheader. Uh, for all you podcast folks, we love you all out there. This will be hitting on the on-demand side next week remember like what you hear this anything else you hear on the network throw a like a star a comment all that does help like our five-star review coming in this week from mr hype train i like that handle mr hype train he says just subbed and taking it all in yeah it's a lot to take in i agree mr hype train we have been doing this for 17 and a half years so let it just let it just wash over you and you'll you'll get into it very soon don't get overwhelmed by the content there's a lot there <laughs> But start taking it in a little bit at a time, and bam, next thing you know, you'll be up and running in no time. Thanks to Mr. Hype Train and everyone else who takes the time to rate and review our content, just about every platform under the sun. That's where it's all available these days. It all helps new people continue to discover the content. When they discover this show, they discover none other than the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring, what the cool kids call mm to um, Mr. P. Welcome back to OBC for a little bit of doubleheader action, sir. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, Mark. Uh, good to be back. It's been such a long time. Such a long time. Has been a very long time. And a little bit of a callback to that last episode, which we just recorded, listeners. Dan, right now, the guts is taking it in our hotly debated guts versus thorax flash poll. 100%. 100% of respondents are choosing the guts. Does that surprise you, sir? Uh, no. You so, uh, Only a crazy person would call it a thorax. Like, where does that even come from? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. 
the audience, ultimate arbiters of all things at the end of the day, listeners. As we keep on rolling, it's time for a little bit of basic training. All right, Boot, it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? Pull in. Prepare to learn. All right, everybody. Welcome to a little bit of the old basic training, the portion of the show where we break down a basic options concept and explain how you can utilize it. Maybe why you should, maybe why you shouldn't out there in your portfolios. And today's one is a little bit different. Probably one you haven't encountered out there, at least maybe in some of your basic options education journey. Maybe if you've been doing it for a little while, you're a little bit more advanced. Maybe you've come across it. It is the covered strangle. You know, it's an interesting term. Many things are, are, are baked into that name Somewhat misleading as well, the whole notion of it being covered and all this fun. Dan, let's play a little word association here at the top of the show. When I say the term covered strangle to you, what leaps to mind? Uh, Excitement, Mark. A lot of excitement. That's great stuff. Be honest with us here. This is a safe space. We can all be honest. Have you ever traded a covered strangle? Oh, yeah, of course. What is your traditional, without getting too deep into the weeds, what is your traditional use case forms? My traditional use case is within my IRA when, uh, and usually on a lower value stock because, you know, you end up potentially owning double the amount of shares. And I know we're going to talk about all that in a minute. Um, But within my IRA, when I basically have a high point where I'd be okay letting the stock go and a low point where I'd be good buying more and, if it's in a range, gets double dip, and everything's wonderful. So, yeah, I uh, they're very useful under the right set of circumstances. All right, let's get to it then, listeners. What the heck are we talking about with the covered strangle? Once again, we go off to our old friend XYZ. We've all made and lost many fortunes. I could tell you stories, listeners, of the epic sagas of my trading in XYZ. Today, XYZ is trading at $50 again. Uh, you're fortunate. You're long 1,000 shares of XYZ, so $50,000 worth of XYZ. You're doing all right in XYZ, at least. Uh, you're looking at it, and you're saying, you know, I want to hold on to this stock. I think it's going to appreciate, but maybe not a ton. You know, if it rallies another 10%, gets to the 55 strike by the end of this, let's say, one month, then I'm okay letting it go. So in our example, the 55 strike call for one month is trading for 50 cents. You say, you know what? Sold to you, so you have a thousand shares, so you're going to do a 10 lot now. So, of course, that means you're going to collect $500 in income for that trade. Remember, 50 cents times 100 times 10. The math's pretty simple, just a lot of zeros you got to deal with. So, you're making 500 bucks. If the stock sits here throughout the next month, you make 500 bucks, no harm, no foul. You know the deal with a covered call, a pretty straightforward. And you can probably start to see why there's a covered element to this title here. Now we decide, you know what? 500 bucks is not enough for me. I'm a greedy bee. I want more. (laughs) Or you've also decided, you know, you really like this underlying. And if it dips a bit, you don't mind picking up some more. I think the latter use case is the better one. But if you're a greedy bee, (laughs) that's up to you (laughs) why you want to do this. But sometimes people do it for the wrong reasons. They just want to make more money. Oftentimes, though, they like an underlying And they want to pick up more and they don't mind doing it at this level, which, again, that's what we've always said from day one on this show is the first and most important bit of risk analysis you need to do when selling a short put. Do I really want to buy the stock at that strike? If the answer is yes, then you've done your due diligence. You're good. So hopefully you're doing that here. In our example here, you're long XYZ again from 50 and you decide, you know what, if it dips a bit. I don't mind picking up some more as well. I'm kind of longer term bullish on this name. So let's say in our example, if it falls 10% to the 45 strike in one month, I shall buy some more. In our example, the 45 put is trading for 75 cents. Remember, puts in most environments are bid over calls, at least in the equities most of you are going to be trading out there. So this is where things get a little dicey. 
you decide, you know, you don't mind doubling your position, buying an additional 1,000 shares of XYZ at $45. So you're going to sell another 10 lot. So again, 75 times 100 times 10, $750 in your pocket. So pros and cons of this strategy. The pro is pretty obvious. If this stock sits here for the next month, you've more than doubled the amount of income you're making here. You've gone from 500 bucks to $1,250. That's a big bump. So you could certainly see how some people are, who are sitting in names that are maybe a little bit sleepier are saying, you know what? I need to juice this up a little bit. I need to turn this up to 11 for my income stream and the covered strangle is how I'm going to do that. Also, before we get all the pros, because you added, you added more income to the trade, you've also now increased and expanded your break even on this trade. Your covered call, the breaking was $55.55 before. Now it is $56.25. You added an additional 75 cents to that because you collected more of that in income. So that could also come into play as well. Now the con is this is of this position is pretty obvious. You can probably see it right now. You're adding quite a bit of risk <laughs> to this position to the downside. Also, because you're selling that put, most brokers are going to put aside a fair amount of margin for this trade as well. So this is not a risk-free no cost, hey, let's more than double your income with no cost. There's no free lunch at the end of the day. The cost for that is an opportunity cost in terms of you're going to tie up a lot more capital now for this trade than versus just doing the covered call. So it's up to you. You have to do the analysis whether that extra 750 bucks is worth the amount of capital you can't use to trade somewhere else. So let's break down a couple scenarios. Scenario one, I think you can do the basic math on this. It's effectively a strangle you've got against your stock now. If you stay between the outer limits of that strangle, 45 and 55, you're looking pretty good. Obviously, you might lose on the stock to the downside, but from an options perspective, you're going to keep your full $1,250 if you stay within that band by expiration. On um, Scenario two, the stock takes off to the upside. Your break even is obviously 56.25, so that's where you're letting your stock go effectively. Anything beyond that, you're not participating, but you're also made $6.25, so that's $6,250 on this trade. Not the worst thing. Uh, to the downside, as things start to get a little dicey, obviously, uh, your break even now has gone to $43.75 to the downside. Of course, you collected a buck 25. You sold the 45 strike, so knock that off the 45 strike. That's where you get your 43.75 break even. So if the stock closes below that, now you're feeling more pain than you would have just with the stock. Obviously, you're already losing money with the stock. You're losing money on top of that now by selling the put. So let's say an example, the stock closes at 40 even in one month on expiration. Obviously, you lost 10 bucks on the stock to begin with. That's already an ouchie. That's $10,000. Now, that's a rough one. So you're off 20% off the, off the top. And then on top of that, you sold the 45 strike put. You got a buck 25 for that. So you lost $3,750 on that put as well. Remember, that's 10 contracts, 1,000 shares, 45 strike. That spread goes that you sold, <laughs> you sold the 45 put. It goes out worth $5 now. You sold it for a buck 25. So obviously you lost $3.75 on that put. Again, times 100 times 10, 3,750. So now instead of just losing 10 grand, which is already bad enough, 20%, now you've lost $13,750. So that's where the other side of this comes in, the dark side. In addition to tying up the capital, you also have the potential for much more loss on this strategy as well. So like everything, there's no free lunch. There's a pro and a con. The cons can be severe, but the pros can also be pretty good as well. So uh, this is an intriguing one. Dan, you mentioned you've done a lot of covered strangles, which is surprising. It's not a strategy that gets out there too much. When you're looking at them, you kind of gave it to us at the top of the show. But let's go into some more detail. You're looking at a setup. What is your ideal setup for a cover strangle. Maybe if you can think of one recently, what's one you did in recent memory? Oh man. Uh, um, yeah. One I did in recent memory was in a stock called Madrigal that is actually kind of a more unique case. This is maybe not my typical use case. My typical use case involves uh, very non-volatile stocks, but this one <laughs> is just really volatile and it has a bunch of skew to both the call and the uh, put side. It's a smile, not a sneer. And uh, it's a stock that I have wanted to own and do. 
And once it gets down to a lower level, I, I would definitely buy some more, especially being able to sell some of that really, really fat, juicy option put premium. But I've got the shares, and at some point, you know, it whips around so much that I would gladly let it go if it gets any higher. Um, and especially if I can sell that juicy, juicy call premium. So um, that's that's a good, very good use case, not my typical use case. I mean, I guess my typical use case is more like, okay, I've got the stock that trades in a range um, and – when it gets down to the bottom of the range, sure, I'd pick up another 100 shares. When it gets to the top of that range, I would dump the shares I have and just write more puts and buy it back later. You know, I like that, like, nice little kitty roller coaster uh, for covered strangles a lot. But uh, sometimes the big boy roller coasters like that magical stock end up working out nice, too. Ah, the big boy roller coaster. You know, I mentioned, Dan, that this is a kind of a contentious somewhat off-putting strategy for a lot of people. And, and the reason I say that is because uh, I remember talking to the folks over there at uh, the OIC back, this is a, a few years ago now, and they had an institutional arm they spun up for a while. And they did a lot of great studies over there and trying to help large funds and institutions utilize options effectively. They did a great series of studies on the collar and how the collar works across a variety of assets, not just equities check it out it's called coloring the qqq that's how it started listeners and they expanded that with additional addendums to really look at how collars perform in the metals and that all kinds of underlying it was a fascinating and one of the still to this day i think the most far-reaching collar study i've ever seen that was very popular with a lot of the institutions out there because the collar makes sense it works for their long equity use case they want to hedge they want to generate income so the oic folks thought well maybe let, let's let's gin it up Let's get a little bit more exciting, a little bit more dangerous even. Let's go to the world of the covered strangle. So they put together a study for that, and they also found that it you know, worked fairly well if you were okay with the additional risk and everything else you were taking. And Dan, they started pitching it to you know, large funds and institutions, and people's eyes got really wide when they heard about the, you know, the increased income. That got them excited, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he started telling them about, oh, and you also are dramatically increasing your risk to the downside, and that was it. That was it. They wanted nothing to do with it after that. So it kind of killed the covered strangle study. And I've never really seen a lot of effort. Maybe we're going to do it here today, Dan. Maybe we're single-handedly bringing back the covered strangle. What do you think? Uh, I think it's worthy of being brought back. And, you know, like I, I've talked about it. We've talked about it all the time that, I mean, trading has a lot to do with your frame of mind, which kind of seems weird because it seems like it should be just so black and white numbers driven. But, you know, I mean, I guess if you're pitching it and saying, oh, by the way, you get a bunch of risks to the downside. Yeah, I mean, right. That's that's uh, a negative. Um, <laughs> but if the pitch is and guess what, you get to buy more shares at a better value if it goes down. And if it doesn't, you get to keep the premium. Uh, now, there's a positive. Uh, and, and it's the same scenario. So I guess it depends on how you look at it. I mean, I, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make with selling cash secured puts, which is half of the covered strangle is they only trade them to skate and not use them for their other intended purpose, which I use them for more than half the time is to hopefully scale into a stock at a lower rate. I, I use it as a as basically a buy order. Yeah, you know, I think that's a good point. How you approach this and how you present it to people is a big part of it. And speaking of presenting it, listeners, the example I gave today was pretty much you're selling calls against your full position and you're also doubling your position to the downside. If that's intimidating to you, you obviously don't need to do that kind of size. You could obviously sell 10 calls in this example and maybe you only want to pick up a few hundred more to the downside. So you sell one or two or three put options there. That's perfectly doable as well. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, 10 to the upside, 10 to the downside. You could do it on whatever ratio makes you comfortable. So that's giving you a little bit of pause. I don't have the capital. I don't want to commit that much capital or that much risk to doubling my position at X strike, by all means, you don't need to do that. <laughs> Just the example we gave you today. So hopefully that at least open your eyes to a strategy that's been kind of maligned 
maybe unfairly a bit over the last decade or so, I would say. It doesn't get a lot of love out there for all the reasons I mentioned here today. But maybe we're going to bring it back with a little bit of the old covered strangle love. Are you down for a little bit of covered strangle if you listen to this today? Are you thinking, maybe I want to look at that? Maybe you have a stock that fits into that category for you. You're looking for a little bit of income on it. You don't mind letting some go at above the market, but also picking up a little bit more to the downside. And also you don't mind juicing up your income stream along the way. Then maybe the covered strangle is for you. I'm curious. Hit, hit us up. Let us know your thoughts on the covered strangle. Do you use it? Will you use it? Are you terrified of it? We want to hear from you folks. And we also want to hear the market taker question of the week. And now it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time for the market taker question of the week. All right, Mr. P. I do have to admit, Mr. P, I, I do miss the logins, but that tune's kind of growing on me. I kind of like it now. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of cool, you know. And being a former bass player, or well, I guess still a bass player, but uh, you know, you got it. It's all about that bass, as they say. Got a good little bass line there. I no wonder why you you picked that one. Interesting. All right, sir, what you got in store for us? Let me guess. People are asking you all about covered strangles this week. <laughs> no, they're asking about thoraxes and an antennae. Oh yeah, I got to check in on that too. Let me pull up that. <laughs> um, no, so a question is: Do you ever hedge with put spreads? And I think we might have talked about this a long, long time ago. But it's a good time to revisit it for a minute here. And my answer is usually no. Um, but you know, you guys know my thing. Uh, trading is about taking the best advantage of the situation. So there's never uh, an absolute absolute. But generally, I feel hedging with put spreads, it, it just gives you a limited hedge. And the whole point of a hedge, like you don't you don't hedge if you're afraid that, you know, the stock might go a half a percent against you. You're you're only buying this pretty expensive insurance is what put options are, right? You're only buying this pretty expensive insurance if you are really scared that you're really needed because something big is going to happen, which in which case the put spreads really don't help you. So that is my question of the week and my answer to it. Speaking of answers, let's go see Dan. What do you think is winning in our guts versus thorax knockdown drag out brawl? Who's winning, sir? <laughs> I don't think a single person said Dorex. <laughs> that one guy I was talking to last week, he might be, if he's listening, he should vote for it. Uh, but yes, right now, 100% of the respondents are voting for guts. <laughs> so there we go. We have laid it to rest once and for all. I'm surprised, not even one vote for WTF. You put that in there too, just for folks uh, like, like Dan, who are saying, what the hell is this all about? But yes, 100% right now, Dan. For that, speaking of our questions of the week, our actual question of the week right now, listeners, is going back to the vol space. You might remember from our volatility episode we did a few months back, uh, we said, oh, maybe, actually, it might have been July of last year. It might have been a year now, which is crazy. It seemed like we just did it a few months ago. Uh, but we talked about a lot of different products. VXX was one of them. I still have my issues with it, but VXX just had another reverse split. Remember, these products constantly erode, listeners, all these ones that attempt to replicate long VIX. So they constantly have to be reverse split. VXX just did a four to one reverse split. At the time we were posting it on Monday, it was trading around $46. It's still close to that level right now. We said right now, does this reverse split make you more interested in trading VXX? And yes, you want to get in on that erosion trade. Obviously, the higher price that it is, the more potential erosion there is for you. So you like it much better at 40 odd than at 10 odd, which it was not too long ago. Or no, you don't trade vol or you don't trade VXX. That, that's fine too. Or you prefer other vol products or you never stop trading it. Dan, I'm curious for you, uh, what is your votes? Is this reverse split? Does it make you more or less interested in VXX or not at all? And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for? <clears throat> oh, you know, uh, honestly, I have to take... Uh I, I have to take a closer look at it. Uh, I, actually, I've been out of town and haven't been uh, trading for the past few days and missed this uh, thing about VXX. Um, I mean, the higher VXX is, the higher VXX price is, the more I think you can take advantage of the bleed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that would be beneficial, yeah. 
Well, that was winning. Uh, looks like 39.1% of our audience now saying uh, they don't trade VXX, so they don't like this one. So 39.1% saying no, it doesn't make them more interested, which is, I get, I've, I've had my issues with VXX over the years as well. I've mentioned it many times on Volatility Views. A lot of issues outside of the product itself with just the way it's run by Barclays and all the other issues. They had a funding issue a year and change ago, which kind of completely derailed the product, so... There's other issues outside of the way the product works, so I can understand not wanting to touch this thing. 34.8% uh, say, yes, this erosion trade is what you're coming to the dance for. You, more of it is good for you. And then a tie for third, 13% say they prefer other vol products. Or you never stopped. You're the diehards. You never stopped trading VXX. Get over there. Make your voice heard. And if you do it quickly, if you're listening on the podcast now, obviously it's too late. If you're listening live, you too can play along in our Guts versus Thorax Battle to the death. All right, Mr. P, you did it. You survived another boot camp doubleheader. How was it, sir? Did you have some fun? I always have fun, Mark, no matter what, even when I'm with you. It's not what you're typing in the chat here. You're saying, man, get me off this show. I can't stand it. Stop <laughs> charging me for all this bandwidth. And I've never heard of a thorax. That's what you just said to me. <laughs> You should see the vitriol he sends me during the show, listeners, when he's not busy day drinking. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dan, if folks can interrupt your day drink with a little bit of options, where should they go? What should they do? Oh, yes. You can always reach me at markettaker.com, two T's in a row, and um, we'll welcome you into the family, answer all your, your questions, have you talk to our trader success team to see what makes the most sense to move your trading forward, which may include things like one-on-one -on -one coaching or may not. They'll just talk to you either way and give you some great ideas on how to reach the goals that you have set for yourself as a trader. Uh, the goals indeed, listeners. And of course, if you want to set some more options trading goals for yourselves or just really see what the heck is cooking over there on the options front, then head on over to public.com. That's a place to go to kick the tires and light the fires on their brand spanking new options platform. Try out the rebate while you're there. If you like getting paid to trade some options, that's always attractive. And of course, give them your feedback on the platform. Tell them we sent you. That'll always go a long way towards helping to support Hopefully your favorite, even if you're not your favorite, you still listen, so we like you out there. Options program, which has been running well, nigh on almost 11 years, of, maybe even over 11 years at this point. It's been running for a bit, listeners. I guess we like you folks out there. That's not going to do it for us on the network today, though, listeners. I'll be back in a little bit with a little bit of some interview action out there. And so stay tuned for that in about an hour. If you're listening live, just come back in the live in about an hour. We'll have that fun on the pro. If you want to learn more about all the stuff we do and get more great content, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Back again tomorrow with a doubleheader, of course, of the option block and this week in futures options. Friday, volatility views and options oddities for all of our pro folks. And we're back again next week, all the way through to next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. Check out public.com if you want to literally earn money to place options trades. There are no commissions or per contract fees. And public gives you a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. Discover why Nerd Wallet recently gave options trading on public five out of five stars. And start paying less than zero dollars to trade options. Only at public.com. Paid for by public investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider.
Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. <laughs>